you are looking for unique ways to celebrate the spooky season, our first guest has a list of local haunted hikes and creepy locales to get you in the spirit. We welcome back the author of the Collecting Sunsets Substack, Adam Sawyer. It's so good to see you. So good to be back. It's been too long. It has, but so we're here. We're here to rectify we're here. that. You have some great ideas for us that can be spooky. Yeah but we can also visit them whenever. Exactly, so tis the season, right? So we, we've got places that are spooky and like haunted hikes, mm -hmm. but, so I'll tell you kind of why they're spooky yeah. and what makes them a little little haunty, but also what makes them great places or destinations or hikes there you go. the rest of the year. And if you're a little bit too scared, just forget about the spooky <laughs> stuff and carry on. That's right, yeah, Still yeah, a fun yeah time. move on forward. Well, let's start with a very stunning place, Cathedral Park. Excellent, yeah. So beautiful. Oh, I love it. It's my former backyard there in St. John's, so let's get spooky. Oh gosh, okay. This, well, that looks kind of spooky. This, does this look spooky? <laughs> spooky hands? I don't know what, what the, what the, there, Ooh. spooky hands. So, Cathedral Park. Okay. They, way back in the late 1940s, <laughs> uh, a young Roosevelt High School student went missing. Oh no. Days later, her body was found on the banks of the Willamette River oh, no. underneath the St. John's Bridge. Oh no. To this day, it is rumored or hear tell, around the campfire anyway, Okay. that people who visit on a late summer's night can hear the woman's screams uh. echoing along the banks of the Willamette River underneath the St. John's Bridge, no. which is now a wonderful cathedral <laughs> park. Right? Ah! So Home to. So you got scared when I went happy? <laughs> Creative <laughs> licensing in the control booth. No, okay, so, okay. So Cathedral Park now is like home to one of the, the, the um, nation's premier jazz festivals, yes. annual jazz festival. It's also, I mean, that bridge is a photographer's dream. Totally. The classic Gothic architecture. Uh, and the park itself is beautiful in all seasons. A wonderful family present, family friendly visit any time of year. Okay, during the daylight, just forget <laughs> that whole thing. Yeah, oh avoid, my gosh. Avoid the screams. I've never can. heard that story before. Okay. I know. Yeah, some of these are going to get murdery. My apologies <laughs> in advance. It's, that's what we're doing. It's Halloween. <laughs> okay, Tryon Creek. That's so beautiful as well. It is. However. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Okay. However, Tryon Creek as a region used to be home to several loggers in the area, loggers. Okay. And now it is heard that their disembodied voices can be heard through the ravines and the canyons. Not only that, making it more spooky, their horses, ghost horses. You could hear their whinnying and yay <laughs> up in the ravines. <laughs> However, Tryon Creek is the only state park in a municipal area in the state of Oregon. Okay. And it's 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 home to a wide array of hiking options. Yes. As well as ranger-led programs that are fun for kids and the whole family. Oh, good. <laughs> Jeez uh, Louise. Okay. <laughs> I gotta catch you like my where breath. This is going? You oh see my gosh. Detecting the pattern. Okay. Uh, the Benson Hotel. Oh no. That's a fancy place. The Benson Hotel. <laughs> <laughs> the Benson Hotel erected by, by uh, Lumber Baron. Um, was it, was Mr. Benson. It? Yeah, Mr. Benson. <laughs> What's his real name? Simon Benson. Thank you. Benson Bubbler. All that stuff. Oh, right. That's where guy loses his notes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Simon Benson, wealthy Lumber Baron, and also uh, a well-known um, uh, prohibitionist. Oh. Uh, a teetotaler. Did not like alcohol or anything. But anyway, Mr. Benson eventually passes. And it's said, it's rumored, that his specter can be seen coming down the stairs oh. into the lobby of the Benson Hotel. Really? And occasionally, he'll knock over the drink of a bar patron. Oh no! As one last final stern finger wagging against yeah. those who, who 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 desire alcohol. Very judgmental. However, okay. That's also one of Portland's finest bars. It is. And it's a great place for live jazz, a smart cocktail, <laughs> and if you enjoy rare Circassian wood. The Benson is your place. <laughs> it is beautiful. It is. It's it looks lovely place. in the daylight in these photos. Holy cow. Yeah, look at that wood. That's like <laughs> Circassian walnut from Russia or something. Okay. Let's talk about Old Town Pizza. This is kind of a well-known. Yeah. I've heard of some haunts here Oh, before. my gosh. Yeah. This might be one of, like, the, like, cornerstone yeah. of haunted places because back in the 1800s, <laughs> This was the Mercantile Hotel, mm. and uh, or Merchant Hotel. Let's not, let's, let's let's keep this on the up and up. <laughs> it was the Merchant Hotel, so, uh, uh, home to all sorts of malfeasance, 
not the least of which being the murder of a prostitute named Nina. Oh no. Who was dispatched down, down the elevator chute where she met her untimely demise <laughs> at the bottom. And I'm told, <laughs> keep it together, <laughs> Sally. <laughs> I'm told that, that, that to this day, folks visiting the pizzeria, which used to be the lobby of the Benson Hotel, might catch a faint whiff of perfume. Oh or no. Or feel a, a, a subtle touching at the nape of their neck. Oh no. Which I am told is the ghost of Nina <laughs> seeking her revenge. Today, Old Town Pizza happens to be a place where you can get an assortment of pastas and yes. pizzas and award-winning beer at that. It also happens to be a very cozy place and heavy on ambiance for anyone looking to take a family-friendly jaunt. <laughs> it's funny how well, many of these locations are so family-friendly. <laughs> well, aside from, from prostitute murder, <laughs> That, yeah, it was a different time, a different place. It was but yeah, a different time. Yeah, most of time. these are family friendly, you know. Okay, well, let's talk about a cemetery. Let's get real spooky about it. <laughs> the Lone Fur Cemetery. <laughs> it's a cemetery. It's a cemetery. I, mean, <laughs> I don't got to church that up much, do I? It's a, that's where they keep the dead people. It's happening. Uh, so yeah, it's 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 a cemetery, so it's going to be spooky. However. It also happens to be uh, one of the longest continually running cemeteries in Portland. Mm. It's the second largest arboretum in the city of Portland, oh, sure, if you can yeah. believe it. And the uh, Friends of Lone, Lone Fur Cemetery run all sorts of tours, uh, multi-themes multi from historical to haunted, all okay. sorts of themes, tombstone tours I took one time. Uh, so Lone Fur is just a great place to go anytime. Here. That's kind of nice. You can have a sanctioned visit and still respect the property and, and its exactly. residents, yeah. as it were. Okay, how about Hasita Head Lighthouse? That's also okay, a great one. Okay, this is great. So Hasita Head Lighthouse and the, the Lighthouse Keeper's residence are known to be some of the most haunted places on the entire southern Oregon coast. Oh, no. Home to a specter named Rue, who's out searching for her lost child. There also happens to be the Hobbit Trail, which oh. leads through a dark, spooky forest from the lighthouse keeper's quarters all the way to the Hobbit Beach, if you make it. Oh. However, the <laughs> postcard come to life, Hacienda Head Lighthouse, <laughs> is easily one of the most uh, photographed locations yes. on, on the Oregon coast. And, and also, the lighthouse keeper's residence there is a beautiful bed and breakfast now. I got the right. privilege of staying there one uh, holiday season. Super cozy, gorgeous, wonderful place. And that Hobbit Trail, it leads from that area through like this wonderful forested Sika spruce, tunnels of like Waxalal, and arrives at that nice little kind of um, off, off, off away, um, very scenic uh, Hobbit Beach. Okay. Another family-friendly jaunt. Okay. We did it. Thanks, Adam. <laughs> yeah, it was so pleasure. great to see you. I'm Good scared. You. Okay, we'll have more about Adam and his substack, Collecting Sunsets, on our website at katu.com. We'll be right back with more Afternoon Live right after this. <laughs>